So there's a ton of new players in Deadlock now that there's a large number of ways to actually get invited to the alpha. Now I've seen a lot of people be very confused on a lot of certain things. So here's some tips to get you guys started, all right? So in a dual lane, the souls are given equally to both laners before 10 minutes. And then after 10 minutes, the souls are split depending on the number of players in lane. I mean, it, it is split based on the number of players in lane if it's above two. Now the laning phase is defined as the first nine minutes of the game. So make sure to keep that in mind. Now you can also pre-fire where the soul orbs are gonna appear. They always spawn from the mist after the troopers die. So pre-fire just a little bit so that you're, you don't need to rely on your reaction time to get the soul you already be shooting. Now make sure to do like one or two bullets. You don't wanna be like using your entire clip magazine whatever you want to call it right like that's gonna be a little bit silly and then you won't be able to harass your enemy as much which would kind of suck i've seen some people be confused on the zipline boost it actually lasts long enough to, for you to boost back to base and then come back boosting to the lane so make sure to use your boost as you're leaving lane don't wait until you get all the way to base because then you're just taking way ex more time than necessary to actually get back to lane at that point, you'd be losing troopers, you're losing souls, and you'll start falling behind. Not a good thing to happen. Oh, yeah. Fun fact, an extra wave of troopers drops after the first guardian is killed. So make sure to stay to kill that extra wave if, you know, it's safe to do so. Or else the troopers will push all the way back to your guardian. And if you left lane to, say, gank somebody, you might actually lose your guardian off of that, which would, you know, be kind of sad. And also would give your enemy lane a a ton of souls and an ability point which you don't want you want to stay ahead because you're doing well so the gray barriers that you see around the map are called cosmic veils they're like one-way vision barriers so you could see from one side through to the next as if it's not there well through a filter but it's kind of like league of legends bushes if you guys have played that way like you could see out of it but they can't see into it and they also interact with the item veil walker very important to know it's also a very very good item so you can see here the veil walker part Walking through your Cosmic Veil grants you stealth, increased movement speed, restores all bullet and spirit shields, and grants a bonus fire rate for your next magazine. Which means when you're going through these veils, you could actually like run through it, get your shields restored, and then just annihilate somebody who was not expecting you to have it. And also the fact that you go invisible also means that you could use the veils to escape if you have this item. Very good to remember, it's gonna make you very sneaky. There's certain movement abilities like Paradox Kinetic Carbine that you can cast before you pick up the Soul Urn to get a movement boost. Make sure if your character has a boost like this that you use it to get the Soul Urn, that you use it to get the Soul Urn at the opportune times because that could be the difference between you getting the Soul Urn and getting a ton of souls for your team and you getting kind of bitch slapped by the enemy and being very sad because you lost this whole urn right as you're about to deposit it, which we have all had happen. A lot of people don't know that the boxes and the statue boosts are permanent. So they give you tiny boosts that add up over the game. The boosts that they give you are ammo, cooldown reduction, fire rate, max HP, spirit power, and also weapon damage. Make sure to collect these as you're going around the map because there is going to be a huge difference during the mid game and late game if you've been collecting them compared to somebody who has not because they add up really quickly. I saw somebody ask this question in the deadlock discord a few days ago and I thought oh, this would be something to bring up for sure. The soul urn rejuvenator bonuses do apply to both living and dead players. Now the soul urn rejuvenator it does give you a respawn bonus so you get half the respawn time when you have the bonus up. But if you're dead, it applies to your current respawn. So if it's possible, you can actually min-max this. If you're not in danger of getting the rejuvenator stolen, you can actually just wait for your teammate to respawn. And then they'll have the bonus for their next respawn, which would be really useful because I know you guys are going to push into the base because why else did you kill the mid-boss? Important to remember. All right, next tip is that you could maximize your movement speed by doing dash jumps into slides, but don't slide until you stop kind of just start back running so this triggers the kinetic dash which gives you a fire rate bonus and also bonus ammo until your next reload basically kinetic dash just makes you way more mobile which is really important in this game because the movement is so clean 
So you'll be basically uncatchable if the enemy cannot match your movement. And if you have extra stamina, well then they literally can't because no matter what they do, you're gonna have more stamina than them. Makes it for some really uh, cheeky escapes, which I love doing. Remember that you have unlimited ammo when sliding. Make sure to abuse this to your advantage. For example, you could slide back down the staircase while you're doing the Guardian, or for example, sliding for a kill when you already ran out of ammo, or you're about to run out of ammo, or you just wanna extend your magazine. All these are really useful scenarios for be sliding. As a matter of fact, just slide everywhere, right? Just pretend you're a slug, just slide all over the ground. It's gonna be useful. All right, the next tip, and one of the most important ones, is that there are some seriously useful active items. So for example, Ethereal Shift makes you untargetable and invincible for a short time. You could use this when you're using, for example, Influences Ultimate right as you're about to die to heal back a bunch of HP. It, this item is so important for team fighting. The next item is also Decay. So Decay reduces healing received and also inflicts damage over time. And you see here, the bleed is 3.1% per second. That is an insane amount. That's 30% of somebody's max HP. And it gives you healing reduction. It is so good. You could use this to like, just absolutely nerf the enemy shiv because he's, you know, healing a shit ton. There's also knockdown for those really annoying talons and vindictors that are always in the air. Look at that. They get knocked down and stunned after a three second delay. They just pull them out of the air. That's all you need, but you need to build this, right? And it's not like it only does the active. It gives you a spirit shield. It gives you spirit power. It gives you stamina. Stamina is always useful because it just makes you way more mobile. Another important item to remember. And then we have for the early game, we have healing, right? So healing, right, gives you regen and sprint speed. So it allows you to run away and also allows you to survive in lane. If you're versus, for example, Wraith, who could poke you down really easily because she has, she has those AOE cards. I always, I, I always buy healing, right? If I realize I'm just getting absolutely clapped in lane and you probably should as well because you don't want to die. One of the most important things in a MOBA is to just not die. Even if you're like, just like slowly getting souls, it's so much better than not dying. Because when you die, then you get screwed because you start falling further and further behind and the enemy starts sm snowballing. You don't want that. All right, the most important tip I could give you all right now is look at the map every few seconds. Like no matter what, you get so much information from the map that like you will increase your situational awareness. It'll make you very hard to gank or to be caught off, off guard by like, you know, a bunch of people collapsing on you during the mid and late game. It also helps a lot for you to make better plays because you could see that the enemy is pushed up a little bit too far. You could leave your lane and go and just like absolutely stuff them. Watch your map every three seconds, no matter what. I know it's gonna be hard, it's, it feels distracting, but you will become a much better player much faster if you do this one simple tip, All right? But yeah, that's all I have for you guys today. Uh, make sure you like this video if you liked it. Subscribe for some more Deadlock content. I'll be streaming Deadlock a few times a week as well. So make sure you check in on those. And uh, yeah, I hope you all enjoyed and I'll see you guys soon. All right, so take care.